I've mentioned the health fund, I've mentioned the education fund. But think in terms of your strategy to drive the agenda to get the broadband rollout. You have to be aggressive in that. All of you do. But you have to also be realistic that this won't be rolled out in just one term of government. So it is going to be competitive bid, the issues that stack up, etc. And that's why I'm encouraging you to think in terms of how you can say in terms of your bid for the education fund and your bid for the health fund, how do you put those together? Think in terms of not just the teaching uh, in the universities, but how it can relate to teaching and service delivery in health. And how you can connect your businesses, the e-commerce connection. Because if you are about diversifying your economic base, the most important opportunity they're going to have is being able to access global supply chains. This was something, again, as Trade Minister, I was very keen to push. The services side of the equation, global supply chains. This is where Australia's future is. But you need broadband for it. So in other words, strengthen your argument for the National Broadband Network by thinking creatively about how you can make the hospital fund, the education fund, uh, work more creatively for you. And again, the point I want to underscore in the oval on the side of the box, I want you to be thinking about an outcomes focus for your region across the portfolios. I think you sell yourself short, you diminish your potential if you simply look in the silos of the portfolio responsibility. So I want you to think in terms of an outcomes focus, not just an output from an individual uh, program. Now, as for the RDAs themselves, these are going to be critical in terms of delivering the uh, um, initiative. Can I have the next slide, please? There are 55 of them nationwide. Um, as Andrew uh, indicated before, these cover capital cities uh, and, and they cover the whole of the country. That's important because I think regions shouldn't just see themselves as a separate class. They do have to link to the capital cities because in many cases this is where your distribution point is if you're an export uh, focus. But I don't want to go to that point today, I just want to underscore the point that the responsibility of this portfolio is for the whole of the country but driving localism in relation to it. The RDA is critical to driving those local solutions. I agree with the analysis that was made before, the difference between us and the European model. I, I think we need to look to the European model, but we need to develop the uniquely Australian one that works. But yes, it does have to be about leadership. It does have to be about collectively understanding what it is that we're trying to achieve and be creative in the way in which we connect but it does have to engage much more effectively uh, with uh, government. We want to develop key indicators uh, and drive the outcomes across the uh, portfolio. So we'll be working for input beyond the national indicators, the local, in the local indicators uh, that really matter. So we'll be looking to feedback from the RDAs about that. Importantly, you must drive projects that stack up. I don't want you coming with just a set of wish lists. The wish lists are the easiest thing in the world, but they're lazy. This is a competitive environment. And understand this, the only way we're going to convince the, the boffins in Treasury and Finance that this model works is to not just demonstrate that localism is being empowered, but also localism delivers a more efficient outcome because it knows better what it wants. It can argue more effectively for a more efficient use of the nation's resources. That's why they do have to be proposals that have rigour in them and which stack up. Because if you get that right, then we're not only being able to influence a whole of government approach when it comes to the Commonwealth coordinating, but also a whole of government's approach because it would be a pretty silly government 
whatever its political persuasion, at the level of federal, state or local, that ignored their necessity to contribute to a proposal that makes sense locally. That's why the rigour matters as well. It matters economically and it matters politically. Within the uh, initiatives, we've committed to strengthen the RDA so that we want it to strategise and plan effectively. Engagement, absolutely crucial. It's got to reach out so that there's an ownership with the leadership. It's got to be innovative, develop local knowledge and uh, link to the uh, portfolios. If I can have the next one, thanks. As for the governance, I mentioned before about the resources that are there in addition. The new governance structure, I think, is important. There's me as the minister, completely new department. A department which has received the program side of what used to be the portfolio. But in addition to that, it's got to have responsibility for engaging with the regions, developing strategic uh, policy settings and coordinating across the Cabinet portfolios. The department itself, as I say, will need to develop that strategic dimension as well as its own engagement uh, dimension. And that link, that engagement with the RDAs is going to be crucial. We also have a Cabinet uh, committee for the regions, which I chair, and that's where the leadership will come from. It's a committee of 14 of the 20 cabinet ministers. So understand the significance of this. This is finally a realisation in Canberra that there are so many interactions that matter for the regions. This is the largest cabinet committee that we have in place. Its role is to respond to local priorities and to ensure that in us making decisions about regions, we can say that we've had proper regard to the priorities of the regions. It's about also driving an agenda that more effectively meets regional needs. So, for example, with that health fund, the initiatives, there has to be a consultation process between myself and the health minister. Similarly, in terms of the education fund, there will have to be a discussion between myself and the Education uh, Minister. Further to that, though, in terms of this coordination role, we are requiring the budget to be broken down so that regions can identify what is being spent in their areas in the key areas. We don't do that for the purposes of arguing equality. That would be nonsense, because there are different demographics. But regions having a better understand about what is being spent in the health budget in their region, what is being spent in terms of the education budget, questioning whether you're getting the best value for money for that, that's where I think the spatial accounting will become terribly important. If we're to get that whole of government's approach right, clearly we have to engage the states. There will be a ministerial uh, council and local government will need to be involved in that as well. And in addition, we have the Parliamentary Committee on Regional Australia, chaired by the other independent, uh, Tony Windsor. Um, it, its task is to be able to inquire into the state of the regions, the impact of legislation on regional communities and, on regional, and, and the level of regional resources. This is the first House of Representatives Parliamentary Committee that will operate like a Senate estimates process. Now, you know, you've probably seen that on TV. It's usually about waste and mismanagement, but the true value of the uh, estimates type process is the accountability dimension. The climate, not just to have ministers in there, but to bring the public servants in and uh, question them. The first big task of this committee, of course, is to engage in a process that the Murray-Darling Basin seem to have not done uh, in uh, coming up with a, um, a real solution to the, um, the Murray-Darling Basin twin uh, problems. So um, that's really 
my pitch uh, to you. I think that go to the website. I've tried to give you as briefly as I can what I think is a very comprehensive approach that we're taking, but an exciting opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't miss it. I want us to entrench regionalism in the way we govern this country in a way that can't be unpicked in the future by any government, whoever wins. I want it to be locked in, in the way superannuation got locked in in this country, the way Medicare got locked in in the country. We need to wake up to ourselves as a nation that regionalism matters, regionalism is a more efficient spend of the nation's resources, and if we can unlock and connect with the local drive, the local energy, the local leadership, then we will produce a much more resilient and productive economy. That's not just good for you as regions, it's great for the nation as well. Thank you.